All right, guys, welcome to day 11 of 60 Paisa, the 60 day program on Amazon by Indian Seller Academy. I am Dev and I welcome you to day 11 where we are going to talk about how or what are the steps involved in setting up your business. I will also talk about some of the legal obligation status and uh, tax uh, liabilities there. So make sure you watch till the end. Again, I, I can have a whole day lecture on this but I am not the right person to talk about it. It's regarding your legal advice and the best person that you can help you here would be a chartered accountant, a consultant or a legal advisor. So make sure you go through uh, the full video to understand what are the different things involved, different concepts involved. And then in order to know about them in much more detail, I would suggest that you consult or you, you take the advice of consultant, right? So. Uh, that's that's my advice on this particular topic now with that being said let's get started and in terms of business options on how you can set up your company or your business we have two basic broad categories right the first one is whether you have an individual uh, business or individual company where the options are proprietorship or a partnership firm and the second option which the second broad category is you have a company wherein the options are private limited which is like a, a multi-person company, OPC, which is a one-person private limited company. And then you have a limited liability partnership, which is also called a LLP. So these are the two broad categories. And I'll talk more about, you know, their naming conventions, their tax statuses, their legal obligations as well. Okay. Now in terms of registration, right? Individual is very easy, right? Whether you're going with proprietorship or private part, uh, yeah, partnership, it's, it's pretty much easy, right? So you are, all you need is your own PAN card and this is your own PAN card, your individual PAN card with your name and you can just get your GSTI number for your company uh, name and you know everything. In case of company where it's a multi-person company, then you will have to do MCA registration which is the Ministry of Corporate Affairs. You have to register with them, you have to get your get your name reserved, you have to apply for digital signature, uh, digital DSC which is the digital signature certificate you will have to get your directorship id you have to do the moa which is memorandum of acceptance and uh, th there are a lot of uh, different things and documents that you will have to procure in order to get your company registered uh, again for private limited companies that you can have minimum of two directors or a maximum of 200 directors for one person again since it was one person you can yourself be the director of the company and then for LLP, there's a minimum limit of two directors, but again, you can have as many directors as you want. There's no limit of 200 in case of private limited. Now, in terms of naming convention, again, there are two things that you have to take care in terms of proprietorship and partnership, the legal name and the trade name, right? So the legal name here would be the same name that you have in your PAN card, right? So if your name, in my case, my name is Dave Puthari. So my, my proprietorship, firm or my proprietorship business will have the legal name as Dev Kothari. The trade name can be anything. It can be, you know, representative of a brand. So if your brand is XYZ, you can have something like XYZ, so and so, Sons, XYZ, Enterprises, XYZ, Company, something like that, right? Now, in terms of company, there are three things. You have to provide a unique name and I guess you have to give different options to MCA before one is finalized. You have to choose your legal name, which is again the same as the PAN card, uh, which is mentioned in the PAN card of your company. So you will have a separate PAN card for your company as well. And then the trade name is again, you can have something different to your uh, legal name. The legal name might be a bigger one where you will have something like, you know, uh, XYZ Private Limited or XYZ uh, OPC Private Limited or XYZ LLP, right? That's the suffix that you will have to add. But in case of trade name, you can keep it much simpler and that trade name you can also put in your GST information as well. So this is, is in terms of a uh, naming convection. As I mentioned, suffix is something that you must add depending upon the type of company that you have. So private limited, it goes as P, the PVT dot LTD dot and then OPC and LP as well to follow. In terms of legal uh, compliances, legal status and capital, minimum capital that is required it is best that you go with individual because here there is no separate entity, right? So when you register as a proprietorship, uh, you are not a separate entity. You are identified as the sole person who's running the business and the business is also named after you. 
there's no minimum capital requirement here as well but when we talk about company right it's recognized as a separate entity and it comes at a minimum capital investment as well for private limited and opc private limited this is somewhere around one lakh the num the amount keeps changing you know from time to time as regulations change i'm not sure if that is the current one uh, current amount as such but it requires a minimum amount of capital for llp you don't require any particular capital as such now in terms of existence right uh, individual uh, company or individual firm it dissolves after the death of the person right so if you are a proprietorship or if you are partnership uh, as soon as the in concerned individual you know dies the, the company gets dissolved right the company shuts down in case of company right where you have a multi person or uh, many individuals together forming a particular company it depends upon the directors so directors can set nominees and the share will be transferred to the nominees after the death of the directors or directors can also decide if they want to dissolve a particular company at certain point of time so if it's not working well if the turnover is low if the profits are low they can also think of dissolving the company as well so that's uh, in case of all of private limited opc as well as llp now in terms of tax audits again uh, the, this is uh, something that your consultant or chartered accountant will help you uh, there's a mandatory audit for individual firms who have a turnover of more than 1 crores and for companies doesn't depend upon the turnover you should have a mandatory tax audit i guess for llp here uh, there's a single uh, there's a sim- there's a rule where you say okay if the investment is more than 25 lakhs or the turnover is more than 40 lakhs then only a mandatory tax audit is applicable but otherwise if you are private limited or you are opc private limited a mandatory tax audit is there it does not depend upon the turnover value now in terms of pros and cons and again for beginners i normally recommend that you go with individual because that is more beginner friendly right a uh, proprietorship does have a few cons but again it's easy to get started and you can always convert from a individual account or individual firm to a company based firm where you can have multiple people working together so pros are basically less compliances less paperwork easy to get started there's no minimum capital requirement and the itr rate the income tax rate depends upon uh, your own turnover right so depending upon the tax slab that you are in the same rate is applicable for your business as well in terms of cons again there will be no holdings and uh, you will not be referred or preferred by inv- investors right so you will not have any funding or investors from outside and the biggest con here is that you will be liable right so in case there's any loan taken in the name of your business and the loan cannot be fulfilled or you cannot uh, pay the amount back then your assets whether it's your house whether it's your jewelry any of your assets will be compromised so here you fall under the liability uh, uh, chart right so you, you are the only person responsible because that's your company and it's named after you, you it's an individual company right so and um, that's the con of it and that it's a big big con you will see when i talk about the uh, multi person company we will see that uh, here the liability is shared so uh, again the biggest liability as i mentioned it uh, for companies there's limited liabilities to di- directors again the directors only have to uh, you know worry about their investment in the particular company so in this case let's say if a company has taken a loan and their books and records suggest that they will not be able to repay the loan the directors asset will still be with them the bank does not have any obligation to basically you know uh, maybe uh, lease or uh, they they do not have any obligation to seal the uh, the directors assets their right? their assets are still protected it's just that the company's assets will be sealed and uh, the directors only lose their past their part of the investment that they have in the company again you get funding and you are preferred by investors because if you are a big company if you are established company people definitely want to see your growth and get benefit out of there as well in terms of stakes you can also have holdings the cons are you it, it comes with a minimum capital requirement now this is just 1 lakh as i discussed and i do not consider it as a you know a very big amount so 1 lakh uh, again it's not a huge con but just to compare it with proprietorship and for new beginners Uh, it comes up with a minimum capital which again is a con it requires a lot of paperwork compliances audit consultancy and you know there's a lot of 
lot more paperwork in terms of registration filing and that's that's one headache that you will have to deal with once you have converted to a private label uh, private limited company I'm, I'm sorry i keep talking you know private label and then it, it comes at a flat itr rate so that is also one con so even if you are let's say in the lowest tax lab but again you will have to pay uh, for the flat itr rate that the uh, mca charges you that being said, that's all that I had to cover very quick uh, session today. And again, most of the description or whatever that I've covered today, you will definitely have to go and read it yourself. Registering your company is very important. And again, I normally advise seek the help of a legal advisor, seek the help of a chartered accountant. We all have someone who's in our close relatives who knows about these things much better than we do. And it's always better to, you know, consult them. I also consult, you know, a lot of different accountants and that's what you should also do in this particular process in terms of gst registration if you're a proprietor and that's how i started as well uh, you can just go to the gst portal fill in your personal details and it, you will have i guess seven step process where you will have to provide some proof some identification your pan card details your address details rent documents uh, your uh, uh, electricity bill cylinder bill and all those things and then i guess uh, you just have to provide your legal name your trade name the type of products that you're going to sell and it's it's a very straightforward process and that's why i've not created a video on that but in case if you are if you are going for a proprietorship firm and if you want to know uh, the different steps involved to set up a, a proprietorship uh, company then let me know and maybe i can create a video on that as well so that's all for now and the code for today is isa118 uh, you will see a post on instagram today which will have uh, the details about the task and comment task there and you will be able to see uh, the task details sent to your dm that being said we will see you again tomorrow at 10 pm on youtube so make sure you join us tomorrow as well okay guys thank you and we will definitely see you tomorrow at 10 pm where we will talk about let me check what we are going to talk about we are going to talk about brand name and its importance so that's all and we will see you tomorrow at 10 pm thanks